Good afternoon to everybody who already joined at our 12th Pan-European Conference on Digital Education. We start, uh, we will start uh, at three o'clock sharp, but uh, we usually come early just to introduce ourselves and say good words, positive energy to all of you. Welcome all who already joined the stream we have like uh, wow already more than 100 participants so uh, today in slovenia we present uh, we um, uh, we um, uh, celebrate mother's day so a celebration honoring the mother of the family motherhood maternal bonds we usually give flowers to our mothers and say thank you for all for everything uh, so tell us i know that um, the uh, that uh, majority of the country celebrates mother's day but not exactly today um, maybe some different days so share with us in the comments which is your day for celebration of Mother's Day? And maybe it's a coincidence, and maybe it's not a coincidence that we have um, that we have just women in today's twelfth Pan-European Conference on G Digital uh, Education. Uh, so. Uh, I hope you already saw the program, which is uh, very interesting. We have six different presentations. I will present the program soon. And also we will see who are those amazing teachers that will share their knowledge with us today. Uh, I will briefly go uh, through the program. So my name is Blanka Tatzer and I will be the host of the conference uh, today together with uh, Monica, who is my co-worker. She will moderate the chat. Uh, okay, so now I need um, uh, to see the, the program. Just a second, like that. Mm. Okay, uh, share the screen so that we will see what awaits for us today. All right, so we have the first presentation we have is uh, 21 competences through inquiry based learning. Uh, and uh, we will have two amazing teachers that will present us this topic. Mariana and Kati. Uh, then uh, the next presentation will be on stimulating reflection in an online environment. So also online we stimulate reflection because it's good for growth mindset of our students. And Diana Maria Bildiman will present us uh, her experience. Uh, next we continue starters of joy in distance learning. Uh, Osgu Osturk will present us this topic. And then we go, let's read together by Denisa Dumitrescu and uh, online interactive digital literacy activities by Natalie Lombardi and Roberta Trapani. And in the end, uh, making art interactive with remote work. Claudia Koshenina will share with us her experience, how you can teach online, even if you teach art. 
Okay, uh, I will stop sharing now. And welcome all the participants here. So, um, and uh, also all the presenters. Uh, welcome, Kati. And welcome, Mariana. Hello. Hello. Can you just, uh, Hello. for the start, share a few words about yourself? So, Kati, can you start just to tell uh, where are you from? What do you teach? Some basic things about yourself. We are very curious to know you. Yes, I will give a word uh, for uh, Mariana Mustaz. And uh, then uh, I will continue uh, also with the presentation, my presentation and our presentation. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. We are very glad uh, to see you in this wonderful day. Uh, in Galatia, it's uh, cold. <laughs> the spring <laughs> is not coming yet. Uh, I'm teaching biology from uh, 29 years at uh, Chenegri High School from Galat and uh, in the fa uh, past uh, 15 years I, uh, I am a biology inspector at the county inspectorate uh, school Galat. I work uh, with Kati from six, seven years, maybe more. <laughs> and uh, together uh, we developed uh, some um, online methods to teach biology at our students um, is more um, um, the work is more cataluza uh, uh, i have uh, only the merit to coordinate my colleagues in my job uh, i am very glad to see that uh, i have uh, very very much uh, um, creative work in our activity um, we applied in this uh, last year one uh, of the most um, challenge <laughs> uh, year i can see and we can uh, uh, see uh, that we can adapt uh, mm -hmm. but um, um, uh, this uh, creative uh, work. Uh, mm. Please uh, share the presentation. Uh, yeah, not yet. Uh, at the moment, we will just oh. present all the presenters yes, yes, yes. and then uh, we start. Uh -huh. So, thank you very much, Mariana. Diana, thank can you. you tell us a few words about yourself? Hello, everybody. My name is Diana Maria Beldiman, and I'm a history and English teacher at two prestigious institutions from Bucharest. Uh, I'm uh, very interested in didactics and uh, uh, both in history and uh, philology, and I'm also interested in adapting the, the teaching methods at the online environment. In this respect, I also was member of a very nice European project, Erasmus Plus, um, uh, that uh, was implemented uh, between uh, uh, 2016 and 2018 called uh, Web 2.0 Tools in Education. That's the point where my interest in uh, online tools uh, began. So thank you for the invitation and good luck, everybody. Thank you. Looking forward. Uh, and Usko, please. Hello everyone, I'm Özgür Öztürk uh, from Istanbul, Turkey. I'm an English as a second language in Takmaklı Cumhuriyet Anadolu Lisesi, a high school in my city. Uh, well, I've been teaching English as a second language for about uh, 16 years. And I am also the project coordinator of some international and national projects like uh, Scientex, Europeana, Erasmus, Achieving, and some national projects and uh, I create some digital materials for our uh, Turkish national digital education remote teaching platform EBA. Uh, I love working on such different kind of files like STEM uh, and I'm so happy to be in here and I'm a little bit excited. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, then Natalie and Roberta. 
Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Natalie Lombardi Kaleya. I am. I come from Malta. Um, I'm a head of the department uh, for digital literacy and transversal skills. I work together with my colleague Roberta Trabunmaggi. Um, basically, we work for church schools in Malta. Um, I specialize in primary education. Um, Roberta specializes in secondary. Um, our work uh, we deal with teachers and um, SLTs, and we um, challenge teachers and encourage them um, even to take part in e twinning or um, EO Code Week, um, and where digital literacy um, comes in for a cross curricular manner um, to involve all subjects. Mm -hmm. Welcome. And Roberta, aha, uh -huh, we don't hear you. So can you just unmute the microphone? Um, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. So uh, my colleague uh, Natalie has introduced me uh, well enough. Uh, I would like to add that we are both EU Code Week leading teachers, as well as uh, um, uh, we, we, uh, we are also um, promote um, digital literacy with with uh, senior management teams as well and in schools. So we work across uh, across uh, all church schools in Malta and Gozo. Um, that's so we're, we're we're trying our best to support them in this difficult time. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Claudia, welcome. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Claudia Koshenina. I uh, teach, I'm a uh, teacher in elementary school in a small town, Lashko. Um, teaching is all I ever wanted uh, as a kid. I just um, love um, to share knowledge with my students. And um, I think that being a teacher is a, magnific a magnificent job. Uh, my passions are watercolors, reading books about art, playing piano, and everything. I mean, literally everything that is related to giraffes. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I also wrote um, um, a, some kind of book, 50 Exercises to Train Mindfulness in a Classroom. Um, and I also published an illustrated book called A Girl with a Balloon. Thank you very much. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. And Denisa. Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you today. Uh, greetings from Kalaraj, a small city in the south of Romania, not too far from the sea, from the Black Sea. And um, what can I say about myself? I've been teaching Romanian ever since I graduated at the University of Bucharest. Uh, I teach uh, in a small uh, but nice school here in my native town. Uh, I can't imagine myself doing anything else. Every day is, uh, is joy, is uh, full of happiness, and is a great opportunity uh, for uh, me to grow, for my students to grow, and we share all kinds of experience together, especially last month, which uh, have been a totally provoking way of uh, of reinventing ourselves. And I think uh, we're not the only ones saying that. So enjoy and uh, glad to meet you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's so inspiring for me to see all the teachers that are so passionate about their work together. And uh, today we have 12th conference, uh, which I mean, for me, it's kind of a ritual already. So every last Thursday in month, we join together and learn from each other, learn from all the experience you have. And as you said, Denisa, we all had to reinvent ourselves in the whole previous year. So um, it's just the time, you know, to... Uh, put everything together and share as much as possible so that we can support and learn from each other. Um, thank you for all the presentations. 
and uh, we will start uh, with the conference now officially so uh, welcome all of you who just uh, at the moment uh, joined us so please enjoy the conference uh, uh, which is intended to sharing digital education tools to support teachers in their work and uh, it, Please share the conference in your um, Facebook wall so that also your friends can participate if you have teachers in your network. So uh, we will be happy that you share the conference and all the materials available. So all the presenters gave us their presentations to us and they will be available or maybe they already are uh, in the uh, conference uh, Facebook group. So you go to the Facebook group Pan-European Conference on Digital Education and you will find the PowerPoint presentations from not just today's conference but also from the other conferences. Uh, we have a storage there so uh, welcome to read all of them. Uh, you are asking us about the certificates of attendance. So the link uh, for the certificates of attendance for those of you who would like to have is in the chat. You just click on it, provide your uh, email, name and surname and then allow like five days at least uh, to um, the certificates to arrive in your inbox. Um, we usually need five days because I know that some of you get it immediately, but some of you don't. It's just the application of Google that we use for that has a limited amount of emails that we can process in one day. That is the reason for the difference. You know that some of you get immediately and some of you get uh, later. Um, Okay, and today we also have one more news. I maybe already it already came to you. I know that many of you waited pa patiently for new Erasmus Plus program. So European Commission finally uh, published the program guide for the new period from uh, this year until 27th, uh, 2027, so for the next six years. Uh, and the program guide is already official and published. Uh, I will give you the link so in which you can download it and uh, it's uh, official. Okay, here it is. You can see it now. All right, so welcome, my friends. And uh, we start with the presentation. As always, please ask questions into the chat. And uh, after the presentation, the presenters will uh, answer as many questions as possible. So as many as time allows us to answer. Uh, all right, and now I welcome on the stage, Mariana and Kati uh, with the presentation 21 competences through inquiry based learning. So the topic will be inquiry based learning. Okay. Hello. Uh, I will try to share my presentation here. Uh, Mm -hmm. Just, Just a moment. I will put it inside. Okay. Uh, you can see this uh, presentation. You see presentation? Yes. You can see. Yes. See better, Kathy. Okay. Uh, first, uh, I want to say that uh, I'm also a biology teacher in Galat. Uh, I uh, was, before uh, being a teacher, I worked in the uh, environmental field. Uh, I was, uh, I am a biodiversity um, lover, I would uh, say. I, uh, I like very much to do 
uh, activities uh, with the kids uh, in this uh, uh, domain especially. Um, but um, I also think that uh, our uh, theme is uh, uh, very important because, uh, because uh, before pandemic situation, uh, using digital tools and resources uh, or uh, developing digital competence were uh, options. Uh, something uh, desirable, but not a necessity. Uh, even if at uh, European level, level uh, there was an existing framework regarding uh, digital competence specific for education field, uh, introducing uh, digital tools in learning scenarios or in learning processes, it was uh, something uh, depending on every teacher decision. But uh, suddenly, as Mariana said, uh, suddenly we had to adapt for the new conditions in order to create a good learning environment, attractive and uh, creative lesson for our students. So uh, formality became necessity. Uh, for our uh, for science teachers, the internet has been increasing uh, access to a vast amount of resources in a multitude of uh, formats. In this inquiry-based learning environment, uh, we teachers operate uh, most as facilitators in uh, students' learning experiences. Um, I think that we have to promote inquiry as a goal for all uh, science uh, teachers. So my presentation and Mariana uh, Mustaza is about uh, 21 century competences through inquiry-based uh, learning. So what are the skills needed for students in uh, 21th century? Uh, as we know, uh, these skills are communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and uh, creativity. Uh, so solutions for uh, 21th century will come from creative people who are willing to do things differently. Uh, this concept, the inquiry-based learning, is not, is not a new concept, but is a part of uh, inquiry-based uh, science education. What is an inquiry, practically, is uh, about asking questions. Is a pedagogy or teaching strategy adopted by science teachers, uh, which mean uh, designing and facilitating learning activities that allow students to observe, experiment, and review what is known in light of experience. It said the uh, minor. Um, so, inquiry-based learning is a process of discovering new causal relationship relation with the learner formulating hypotheses and testing the uh, um, theories by uh, conducting experiment or making observation. Uh, what are uh, advantages? Uh, for teachers, uh, we can be facilitators. We can develop a question or a topic to explore, or uh, we can design activities to engage students. The students. Uh, for students, they uh, engage in a self-exploration of the subject. Uh, this uh, inquiry-based learning encourages curiosity, develop critical thinking skills, we, we, uh, who are very important uh, at uh, their age, increase uh, study, uh, students' interest in science, and uh, why not uh, discover fun ways of learning exciting new things. What, is, uh, what are the phases of uh, this process, inquiry-based learning? Uh, first, phase, first phase uh, is orientation. Practically, the teacher give uh, students to explore uh, a topic. Uh, students uh, interact, uh, discuss, uh, communicate. Uh, teacher give direction for the next phase. Uh, conceptualization uh, phase is clarifying or summarizing uh, or uh, learning with teacher support, make a research plan, then uh, come investigation and uh, finally conclusions. Uh, these are uh, the uh, theory. Uh, we used uh, in classes um, a wonderful platform, I think, for science teachers. Uh, is named uh, GoLab. Uh, this uh, platform is an integrated virtual space uh, 
with a high degree of interactivity, focused on learning, teaching, and assessment. Uh, this platform includes the ILS, Inquiry Learning Spaces, based on interrogative learning to create personalized le lessons. Um, to access this platform, you must uh, create a, a login account in uh, Grasp, a free open access platform. So, we applied uh, for GoLab Go in uh, a unit named uh, Journey into the world of the senses, uh, specifically for uh, I. Based on the topic or on research questions, teacher built an ILSE. So uh, our five senses have help us integrate our body in the environment, keep us healthy and safe. With our senses, we can see, hear, feel the beauty of the nature, but also negative aspect, aspects in our uh, neighborhood. Uh, inquiry learn spaces um, look uh, like this, and uh, the aim of this uh, ILSA is to provide students with an opportunity to conduct scientific experiments guided through the inquiry process and supported at each step. As we can see, I uh, 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 I structured this uh, ILSA for uh, this uh, unit. Orientation and conceptualization phase, students uh, gather information on research questions about sense organs. In dedicated uh, ILSA from GoLab, teachers introduce specific materials in order to guide the students. And the teacher also, which is very important, introduce some appropriate tools like uh, concept map, map uh, templates, hypothesis builder, also, uh, uh, here we uh, can see some uh, examples from uh, this uh, GoLab platform. Uh, here are uh, the work tasks who, can, who are completed within uh, an online application, some apps, input box, concept mapper. Uh, work tasks can be submitted also through Google Classroom. For this task, uh, teacher has the possibility to check in real time the completion of the work task by the students. Advantages uh, uh, is uh, an advantage is uh, that this platform can be used also in a classroom and also in remote learning. Uh, for investigation stage, students have the opportunity to experiment in virtual laboratories. For example, for this topic for I, uh, the laboratory presents the visual defect and how to correct them using the appropriate lenses. Also, uh, students make crafts representing the human eye following the instructions uh, presented. In this way, specific terms discovered in the lesson are also fixed in a practical uh, and uh, funny way. Uh, conclusions. Uh, the students uh, could explain the relationship between structure and fun function of uh, um, these organs, underlining the main components responsible for sense of vision, hear, taste, smell, or tactile. Underline the importance of having healthy sense organs for a good health or for the entire body. Um, another uh, unit is, uh, or question, inquiry, is how do plants get energy? Uh, for uh, instance, here we have photosynthesis, uh, like a service ecosystem. Uh, students must uh, illustrate the relationship between environmental factors and the photosynthesis, and gather evidence of inputs and output of uh, photosynthesis. Uh, we're given the task of watching a short documentary of the process of photosynthesis, and uh, then uh, they will work in classroom. Based on this documentary, they watch at home and reviewed in class. They uh, made in group explanation of the process. And uh, with the help of the online models, the student make, uh, made the models and the experiments on the photosynthesis process. In remote learning process, students made craft at home and present them in a Google Classroom or in, in a Padlet. These are works of students uh, in uh, uh, this online uh, learning. 
Students also made home experiments regarding environmental factors for process of photosynthesis. You can see here uh, effects of the light uh, for the plants and uh, here uh, experiment with the leaf. So, um, in a UNESCO report, uh, we found, I found uh, something interesting that uh, rethinking pedagogy for the 21st century is a crucial in identifying the new competencies that today's learners need to develop. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So, um, uh, congratulations and uh, on your beautiful presentation. Will also Mariana like to add something? Yes, I <laughs> I like to add that uh, there are only two examples uh, of the activities that uh, our colleagues developed uh, in our schools in this uh, period. We learn together and we learn from each other uh, more uh, than uh, online activities. We like to uh, work with World World quizzes, Kahoot, Padlet, Jamboard. <laughs> we develop more uh, experience and uh, I like to say that uh, the pandemic has a good uh, aspect that we uh, become um, an IT uh, developers, <laughs> an IT experience uh, workers, uh, just like uh, now. Uh, we share uh, this um, work with other colleagues, and uh, we like to see that the students are more interesting in the, our science uh, activities with this uh, online activities. Uh, thank you very much and uh, good luck everyone. Thank you, it's so nice to see that uh, actually the pandemic in a way give us a kick in our butt to, you know, to develop more. So it's uh, really good to see all the tools that you use in order to support students uh, with key competences that we all need in 21st centuries. Uh, okay, so there are uh, uh, thank you messages in the comments, a lot of them. Uh, if you have any questions, please do um, ask. Um, otherwise, otherwise we will go on with the next presentation. Uh, so I ask, uh, so I invite the next uh, presenter on, onto the stage, uh, Diana. Welcome. All right, just a Thank moment. Welcome. Uh, so Diana uh, Maria Bildiman, her presentation is entitled Stimulating Reflection in Online Environment. So I'm really curious to learn how you stimulate the reflection part, which I believe is really important for students. Okay, so you can start sharing. Oops, you. just a second. Yeah. And we will start with a Mentimeter. Uh, Monica, if you could please help us with the link, or uh, I don't know if you can see it here. Okay. Have you ever thought how to create a reflection moment? Yes, uh, we see it, uh, Diana. Thank you very much. So Diana would like be as interactive as possible. So as I can see, uh, she would like to present uh, her case by also by leaving the case because uh, she will invite all of us to reflect a little bit. Uh, so please go all of you to the Mentimeter and use the code that you see either on the screen or in the chat. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the answers. Well, it seems that everybody thinks about reflection and it's a very 
uh, important part of our um, of our lessons. Okay, thank you very much for your answers. Okay. And the next question is, what words come to your mind when thinking about reflection in learning? You have to mention the words um, there on uh, Menti. Okay, thank you. Uh, I will stop share this uh, Mentimeter, but you can uh, continue to um, write your words there because I will start the presentation. And at the end, we will take another look at the Mentimeter to see the results. Okay. So when we talking, we are talking about um, reflection, uh, especially in, in online environment, uh, we are um, dealing with a better comprehension of uh, scientific content that uh, we have to teach according to our uh, curriculum. Uh, we have to take into account how um, the skills that are mentioned in our curriculum are uh, developed. Uh, we also develop a positive attitude towards self and the others. And of course, the most important part from my point of view is metacognition. Um, a very good way to start to talk about um, uh, reflection is to talk about identities. And here is an example of an activity that you can do at uh, personal development classes, that, um, that you can do at... Uh, um, English classes at Romanian, at um, native language, and so on. Uh, I called it my personal coat of arms, where uh, students write their names here, and uh, after that, they should mention some um, things that they consider important for their identities. You can guide them by uh, telling them in the first square you have to mention one of your hobbies or things like that. Um, how can we um, encourage reflection with my personal coat of arms is the fact that they reflect while filling in those squares and after that we might do a um, gallery in Google Classroom or in Padlet and uh, classmates should comment on their um, classmates' um, coat of arms. Uh, in the end, we can organize a debate in class in order to identify the challenges that students face um, while designing their personal coat of arms or to establish similarities and differences within their uh, group. This is an um, example. And another part that we take into account when uh, deal with reflection is the fact that we should um, take into account a very good comprehension. Uh, students should learn to listen in order to understand, not only to listen to give a reply. So this why between listening and answering or asking another question, we should have this period of um, reflection. Um, so we deal with active listening and this could be also uh, put in practice while reading a text where we have active reading. Uh, they should also understand the other person's opinion and uh, we should talk about perspectives and points of view. Um, in most of the cases, students focus on factual questions that are related at this part, what? Um, there are several situations when they go at how and very rarely they, can see, they take into account the reasons that lead to a a specific event and for this fact I've chosen uh, <clears throat> an activity that I did with my um, students while uh, watching a video about uh, the uh, Byzantine Empire. Uh, they had the Padlet where they should mention the things that they already known about uh, this topic, the new knowledge that they that they um, found out um, that activity, and if they have questions, 
another way to stimulate active listening is to encourage them to take notes while reading or listening. Um, and here we should design active listening worksheets or to use games that engage students. Uh, worksheets can be uh, filled in in Padlet, you might post them, or uh, live worksheets <clears throat> and um, questions that they should answer while um, they have a listening activity or while they read something. Um, another important aspect that I found, uh, that this one uh, goes um, mainly for personal development and uh, languages, strategies to stimulate divergent uh, thinking. <clears throat> and here, there are some uh, uh, alternatives to use in class. <clears throat> Feedback is another way uh, in which we can stimulate uh, reflection because it is um, an, an opportunity to um, encourage students to think about their work. And here we can approach metacognition because a good feedback means a good comprehension. Uh, we might uh, ask our students to rephrase their main ideas, uh, to show empathy, to use the vocabulary um, in a new and um, more interesting way. Um, and uh, uh, we, as teachers, um, we ha have, I mentioned here some on <clears throat> uh, suggestions that we should uh, take into account while um, offering uh, feedback. For example, we should reinforce the positive aspects of, this, of a solved task that uh, we all usually do. Uh, we don't uh, offer the correct answer, but lead the student in discovering it. We provide suggestions to improve the assignment, not to offer a ready-made uh, solution. Uh, we could also establish a visual code, especially for primary classes, but I have also seen that at secondary level, a uh, smiley face uh, can make um, a difference when you offer feedback. Um, uh, feedback um, shouldn't be offered only by teacher, but it should also be offered by uh, classmates. And here I have <clears throat> one of the tools that I used uh, for um, history for 11th graders. Uh, while their classmates presented um, some project, um, the classmates had to uh, fill in a Google form that was related to feedback. And um, some of the items that I included in this form were three interesting, three interesting ideas that I have found out while um, attending the presentation uh, session. I have remembered the following three ideas. The most interesting project was because a word that best describes the projects presented today is a thing that I remember I learned about presenting a project is and of course, the results were anonymous and I could uh, share them with my students. And of course, the reflective journal, which is very um, important, especially for assessing the process of learning, not only the products of um, uh, activities. So here um, we might talk about the engagement of students while solving um, a task, especially if we provide collaborative projects, uh, we have to take into account the metacognition again and um, each student with this kind of reflective journal uh, should um, take into account his or her personal contribution as a team member. Um, the reflective journal also um, creates opportunities for critical thinking and creativity. And here um, we have some uh, questions that should be given in order to uh, help students to develop their uh, reflective journal. Um, in my opinion, this reflective journal shouldn't be very long. I don't know, half a page or a page, it depends on the project, and uh, should focus on uh, three main aspects, What, which was my contribution to the project, how I worked with my classmates, uh, what did I feel while working with my classmates, and what about future, how should I um, improve my collaborative work, how should I improve my um, skills in future. Um, in conclusion, um, reflection provides 
opportunities for active reading and active listening. Uh, all the curriculum skills, for especially if we talk about languages, we have reading, speaking, listening, and writing, which are developed, but we uh, have also other kinds of competences when we talk about history or um, biology, for example. Uh, we have a positive attitude towards self and the other, and here we have especially the subjects that are uh, included in uh, uh, humanistic studies, and here we talk about intercultural competence and critical thinking, and of course development of metacognition, which is very important nowadays, the ability to um, learning to learn, uh, which uh, creates efficiency in learning and also uh, stimulates creativity. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, we cannot hear you, Blanca. You are on mute. Of course. Thank you very much. So once again, thank you very much for your uh, contribution on the reflective learning. Uh, I see there are no questions as so far in the chat, but there are a lot of uh, hello and thank you messages. Uh, so uh, if not, then we will move on with the following presentation. Uh, so here I greet um, uh, the next presenter. Uh, if you can start uh, presenting, so uh, Oskur. Uh, welcome. Uh, she has a presentation on starters of joy in distance learning. Okay. Welcome, was good. Yes. Hello. Hello. Hola, Yasas, and Merhaba. <laughs> yes, I'm Osgur from Istanbul, and I'm here today with my presentation. Uh, let me start it. Just a second, please. Yes, starters of joy in distance learning. Uh, you can see my screen, right? So, well, uh, let me begin my starter ideas with a mentee activity. Uh, you can click on the link which was sent from the chat box or you can just enter uh, the code to menti.com as 24601011. And this page will welcome you. Yes, which type of activity do you like most while teaching online? I see your answers. Games. Yes, games is very important, especially teaching online. Online cooperation, collaborative works, right? Learning through games again. Evaluation is important, yes. Quiz, maybe. Gamification, yes, it's very important. Collaborative works, I see. Creating all materials, yes. Thank you, thank you very much. These are really wonderful ideas and good points. Okay, thank you very much for your participation. Well, now let's look at what the students said. I asked 50 of my students, what do you like most in your online lessons? And here are the results. 10 of my students said four skill activities, 13 of them said games, uh, 12 of them said collaborative works, and 15 of them said fun starters and warm ups. So we can understand that a good start to your class is a really important for the participation of the students. Now, today I'm talking about some activity ideas under these headlines. Uh, let's look at them in detail. Yeah, the first one is karaoke. Every level and age of students uh, loves songs, singing songs, you know, 
and song activities, but instead of a classical fill in the blanks or just the topic uh, activities, uh, you may try singing some songs. You can find some uh, karaoke videos on YouTube or you can download the program on your computer and you can try them in the lesson. Uh, maybe uh, for one of your, some of your students, you may inspire them to sing uh, by starting singing with yourself, uh, with your song. Uh, but it would be very enjoyable, I, I'm sure. Uh, the topic of the song can be a subject to be taught in the, uh, in the next lesson or a previously taught subject to make a revision for it, for example. And especially teenager students love sharing their Spotify list on social media, so why not to bring them in the class? Uh, this is a very good resource for the teachers. Uh, let them share their Spotify list and find the songs in the YouTube karaoke videos and sing it in the classroom. It's worth trying, believe me. And uh, maybe there you have some uh, shy students, then you can let them uh, sing in while their camera is off. Uh, and to keep in mind, primary students are the best singers. So uh, maybe this group uh, can be the best uh, target group for this kind of activity. Exer game. Yes, you know, COVID has uh, locked all of us at our homes. Students like sitting on their chair in front of the screen and they don't move for long hours, but they do need moving. So uh, why not try to uh, make them stand up and do some exercises with you through a game. For example, I want to show you a game which I created on Word Wall. Uh, this is a, a spin, uh, spin <laughs> game, okay? Uh, when uh, when my when I ask my students tell me a number from one to ten and for example let her say five, I spin the wheel. And when it stops, stand up and uh, stand up and sit down. She has to do it five times. Five times. Stand up and sit down. This is an exercise game. Uh, and these kind of activities are healthy for both their mind and body and um, for all ages of learners you can create them and namaste uh, i i believe that you all remember from your faculty years the suggestopedia approach well i think that yoga is the new form of suggestopedia uh, and i choose mondays as my full mondays and we do some yoga with my students for example you can find some Example poses for children yoga, uh, you see some uh, legs and arms are wide open and you say shine like the sun or maybe you can try uh, legs, uh, sorry, sit cross legs and flutter like a butterfly. They can be tried and also for your elder students, uh, you can find some other yoga poses from the uh, many websites in in the web, on the web. And this one. We all celebrate special days, you know, Valentine's Day, Halloween Day, but have you ever considered that every day is special? Well, not officially, maybe, but we have so many alternatives. For example, yesterday was tuberculosis day, and uh, it was a good idea to talk about a popular topic, health, uh, and maybe you can uh, give some idioms about health, health is wealth, for example. And today, today is waffle day. Maybe you can encourage your students to cook a waffle and design it in their own way and make a challenge from it in social media. Why not? Um, or tomorrow, maybe tomorrow is a good hair day. You can assign your students make a crazy hairstyle and show their hairs or uh, if they don't like this idea, you can try the purple day. Uh, they can wear something purple, maybe a t-shirt, maybe a headband, a cap, any accessories can be. But the point is it must be in purple and have a purple day. Uh, you can find many resources on uh, this website, daysoftheyear.com. At the 
very beginning of your lesson. This activity is very beginning of your lesson. Instead of asking how are you, how do you feel today, you can uh, try to ask them, describe their mood with an emoji. You know, they can draw it, they can text it to you, or uh, I don't know, maybe you have a list like this one, and you can, uh, they can choose one of them from the list. For example, I choose the smiling face, and then you can ask why, why did you choose that? Uh, and the student can say, uh, I, because I am happy, maybe. Uh, and I also choose this smiling face because I'm happy to be here with you and presenting my ideas, sharing my ideas with you. And one of my favorites, one of my favorites is advice moment. I assign my students the day before the class uh, to find me something to advise me, find, them, uh, find something to advise me. This can be a book, this can be a movie, this can be a song, this can be anything, you know. And when they uh, come with a book idea, we Google it and then we uh, talk about it, talk about the book. Or if it's a movie, we watch its trailer from YouTube or somewhere else. If it's a song, we listen it or we try to sing it together. Uh, you know, um, they feel, they see the importance that you give to your students' preferences, their ideas, um, their likes and dislikes. And this boosts, boosts their self-confidence at a very high level. And uh, maybe, these suggestions can be what to play from. For example, they can choose the best book of the month, best movie of the week. Uh, they can what their ideas. Well, that's all from me now. I hope you find my advices, my ideas fine and give them a try in your classes. Uh, if you want to share your experiences or any modification ideas to this kind of uh, activities, you are welcome to email me. Here is my email address of goldstock.gmail.com. Uh, thanks for listening and hope to see you again. Thank you very much, Uzgu. Uh, so many tools you presented us. And uh, there is one question in the chat. Uh, so um, there is a question. If you have some recommendations for tools that can be used for teaching economics, Teaching economics, wow. <laughs> That's yes, question. I know you're a teacher, <laughs> but maybe, I mean, maybe uh, some of your tools that you presented, they, maybe they can adapt. Uh, I can advise you Canva. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether if they know, but you can do lots of things with Canva. Uh, you can create some posters uh, or um, interactive uh, presentations like this one or uh, you can prepare some uh, games, videos, uh, interactive videos also. Uh, Canva is a very good uh, tool to use. And maybe for some uh, game ideas, you can use uh, WordWall. It was just what I used in my presentation. WordWall is a really great tool for uh, creating some games because it has so many templates and you can change the game according to your needs. Uh, one of them can be a random wheel and one of them can be uh, choosing the right card or uh, putting in order activity, uh, just like that. But I, I'm sorry, I don't have any experience about economic part. Absolutely no problem. I was looking uh, if I have one book uh, about that, but uh, yeah, I, I haven't found it, but I really recommend. Also, I mean, I, I think that Canva is a good uh, suggestion for any subject. We oh, use exactly. it really a lot because it's so useful. And for educators, I think it's free of yeah. charge. Yeah? Yes, yes, you just yes, have yes. to prove that you are actually a teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's the only yeah. thing. Uh, but for uh, economics, uh, you can maybe check another uh, thing, Biliana. This is the question by Biliana. Uh, it's called Business Model Canva. 
And this is, uh, you know, a really simple tool in which you can um, teach students how to plan a startup in a really, really simple way, just with one A4 page. And uh, they, can, they have to think about everything that is included into the uh, developing a business idea. Maybe that is also can be one um, answer. Yeah. Uh, okay. Mm, uh huh. Yes, uh, they are saying they are saying that they also use Canva, and they agree that it is a really good uh, suggestion. Okay, Thank also good. Thank you very much. Uh, also you for much. your contribution, and um, uh, we move on to Denisa, uh, who will present us. Let's read together. All right, so let's read together with Denisa. Okay, just a moment. Here you are. Welcome. Thank you. Hello again, everybody. Well, let's read together, but not uh, just ourselves, together with my students. Uh, I'm going to present you some, of, uh, some pieces of my activity. I hope my screen will become uh, visible now. Okay, I hope everything's just fine. So, uh, a tale of two classes. It all began in uh, 2019, in uh, December, and um, it was meant to be a long-term project about uh, reading. We thought that uh, the students of today are, of course, the adults of tomorrow. What a cliche, right? And uh, the 21st century core competencies or key competencies or uh, whatever we like to name them generate the framework of efficient school project. Every activity, every, every single activity we develop in schools uh, should be aware of these core competencies because reading and the social emotional competencies are essential for uh, personal, professional and social welfare. And because children need to learn a lot of things, like how to get involved in conversation, how to rephrase uh, things and ideas, how to adapt their um, uh, flow of discussion, how to identify emotions and attitudes, how to express messages and uh, things like this. I thought that um, a teamwork activity would be a great idea. Well, who took part uh, in this? The main characters are the sixth A grade students from my school. Uh, of course, in, 20, in 2019, they were sixth uh, grade. When, like I said, last school year and uh, this school year, and uh, it's interesting that uh, December 2019 was uh, the beginning and December 2020 was uh, the last activity of this project, but uh, we intend to, do, to continue with it uh, next December and so on. Where, well, things uh, begin uh, to, to look interesting because we started it in class, in school, and we ended it online because, as we all know, um, the pandemic forced us to, to move online. Well, how, uh, how all happened? The sixth grade students chose two preparatory classes. Preparatory classes, I don't know if, um, if all of you are aware of, are first classes of primary uh, school. Well, first class we worked with was in our school and uh, the other was from another school in town. The children loved the idea of meeting new people, new children, and uh, for the sixth graders, the most interesting thing was that uh, they would be teachers, they would guide others. And uh, I think it's great because there's no better way to learn something than teaching others, as we all know. And uh, from the other point of view, there's no other person you'd rather learn from and work with than someone like you. So it's about learning by teaching and teamwork. But uh, I didn't mean this presentation to be very theoretical as uh, more uh, practical. So the first stage was the pre-activity and my presentation will go two directions. First, uh, on the left side, we have face-to-face -face, and uh, on the right, we have online. Uh, there are similarities and uh, differences and uh, at the end of the presentation, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that um, a little. We chose our books in the first 
uh, part of it. And uh, there were books children uh, read, children liked. There were uh, classic books or uh, modern books. Uh, there were even uh, comics at some point. And uh, took our colored pencils and flip chart papers, went to our little partner's classroom because uh, we didn't want them to be disturbed by a new environment. When, um, while online, uh, we did pretty much the same thing, except that was uh, one book, not uh, more books. And uh, the little children read it first with their teacher because at their age, uh, not all of them could read uh, very well. And of course, we pray for a uh, good internet connection and met on Meet and uh, Zoom. The activity was um, developed uh, in good conditions, I would say. Everybody was happy, like uh, picture, uh, pictures show you. Uh, they work in teams. Uh, they read together where the sixth grader read and uh, the little children uh, mostly listened. Uh, but basically, they discussed about the text and talked about what happened there and uh, um, the shared opinions and ideas. And this happened both face-to-face -face and online. Um, the new thing about online was that we involved some digital tools like learning apps, like uh, Canva, like Paint and things like this, because they had to share uh, their work, they had to communicate, and somehow they, uh, they, have, uh, they had to cooperate. And they couldn't uh, do it without uh, these, uh, these tools. The post-activity stage, like uh, I named it, uh, is very, very simple and easy to, to think about. Uh, it was all about presentations. Face-to-face, -face, of course, they presented the posters, they talked, they uh, uh, confessed about what they liked, what they didn't like, and the conclusion was that uh, they'd like uh, these uh, kind of things to happen more often. When online, we used, uh, of course, digital tools for that. I don't know if I can share the sound, but here... Sunt Ursul Dragoș și le transmit elevilor mai mari pe, pentru că mi-a plăcut foarte mult. Okay, it's in Romanian, but anyway, it's a little child that uh, says uh, thank you to the colleagues, to the other children for the experience. I don't know if you could hear it, but uh, it's very nice application. Chatterpix is very, very friendly for uh, for little children and uh, it's very fun and easy to use, of course, for uh, older ones. Conclusions, which I think, uh, at least for me, was the most important thing uh, at that point is that um, some changes, of course, were done, but the purpose and uh, the final goal of the activity uh, didn't, uh, didn't change so much. Of course, the participants were the same. The time uh, had to be adapted because uh, we had a special uh, online school schedule. The space, of course, is different, but we managed to keep the form of organization. Teamwork uh, was the, the one of the main uh, concepts of the project. And a change I... Um, uh, I noticed uh, the types of interaction. While face-to-face, -face, children could uh, interact verbally, visually, dynamic, and uh, of course, uh, the, um, the fluctuation of emotions uh, were, uh, was easier to manage. While online, they interact mostly verbally and uh, second position visually, and uh, they had to be more patient and to, um, uh, to regulate their, uh, their own uh, emotions. Tools like uh, like you all saw uh, were about uh, the same, but online we added some uh, digital tools and digital apps. I like very much this uh, word of clouds because uh, I tried to put in here um, all main um, things, concepts, uh, terms, words that uh, uh, reflect the activity and the the purpose and um, the emotion charge of it. And the messages you can all uh, see on this uh, last slide are uh, children's messages at the end of the activity. Nobody can have it all. Together we're stronger. And some choices may be good at their time. Then life changes and we need to change along with it. And I loved very, very much their ideas. So I decided to present them to you. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Denisa. 
for your inspiring presentation as well. Uh, there is one question. Uh, so Vesna is curious to know how to, these children react to the uh, those they, they loved it very 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 much they were in affairs and uh, all of them felt valuable and important and uh, they ended up by talking about all other kinds of things not only the book they had uh, uh, on their task uh, they even asked themselves about math and about uh, teachers and about holidays and uh, things like this and uh, online it seems to to be as uh, more smooth if uh, if i'm saying it right um maybe because the distance uh, wasn't so much visible and uh, they they enjoyed it it was a very very nice feeling and a very nice vibe there and uh, it was like visiting each other like making new friends and uh, i i thought uh, it's uh, is very good for them and the the main idea was we'd like to do this again when uh, when are you going to come back and uh, things like this so yeah i think it's uh, it's good for them they enjoyed it but oh uh, fantastic really really uh, well, I see that somebody would like to hear the sound. I could send you some of those uh, Chatterpix uh, movies. They are very, very little. And maybe you could share them somehow on... Uh, okay, okay. On the Facebook. Oh, there are many, yes, uh, there are many of them. Yeah, well, I have a few. It was the feedback method I used for the little children because they couldn't write well. They only learned some letters at that point. And it was easier for them to express like this. And the painting you saw there uh, is part of the activity. Uh, is the cover they uh, prepared for the book or um, a poster which represent the message they felt um, was important in the text. So uh, it's all about their work, uh, what, what you saw there. I only took the pictures. Thank you, really. Okay, so yeah, I would be grateful for, uh, for your um, input and we will then publish into the Pan-European Conference Facebook group. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Denisa, and uh, welcome Roberta and uh, Natalie with your presentation. Uh, so we move on to online interactive digital literacy activities. Okay, thank you very much, Blanca. I will share my screen now. Okay, so basically we will be talking about online interactive digital literacy activities. Um, I'm Natalie Lombardi-Kalea and I will be presenting this presentation together with my colleague, um, Roberta. Um, we work together um, basically, um, we're head of departments for digital literacy and we assist uh, primary and secondary church schools um, in Malta and Gozo. Um, we assist teachers and um, SLTs with regards to cross-curricular literacy activities, um, action plans, and uh, different digital literacy activities, including professional developments. Um, this is our project overview. I will be um, leaving the floor to my colleague here. So. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. So the project uh, involved uh, a, a primary church school the, from years three to six. It was uh, schools were uh, closed, but uh, there was online learning going on. It was a co collaborative online digital literacy project related to coding skills. Students, students connected from their homes and participated online in the activities. Uh, the aims of the project were to uh, encourage the, de the development of computational thinking skills, to arouse interest in computer science and technology related careers. Uh, also, by we started off with the first computer programmer with her life. Uh, key terms used were they were introduced to were binary and coding, and then they moved on to complete the different coding tasks. 
uh, they carried out a number of activities uh, related to coding. Oh, as my colleague said, the students were at home. Um, we use Microsoft Teams so that they could connect to the session from their own home. Um, obviously, over here, we're covering the names for um, confidentiality. We started the project. Uh, it was a whole day project, actually, and the children had their timings when to con connect with us, including the link, uh, with a presentation about Ada Lovelace. Um, obviously, we chose her since we were also discussing um, ICT and uh, the relation with computers as well. These are just a, a few screenshots from the presentation. Um, we incorporated as well um, with uh, storytelling since the students were um, young. We used the book Little People, Big Dreams um, and on the life of Ada Lovelace. So we went through her um, life. Um, it was fascinating because um, most of the children didn't know about her, but uh, there was one child who actually um, really knew who she was and what she did um, about her work. Um, following that, uh, the children were asked to join uh, via an online web to tool so that they could carry out the digital activities um, that we held um, together in relation to the story and to coding as well. Uh, the tool we used is whiteboard.chat. This is a free web to tool and uh, my colleague will be show going through um, what this tool offers. Okay, so uh, the tool is whiteboard.chat. It offers, it is, uh, it is web-based, so it can be used on various tablets and, uh, uh, and various tools, as well as the laptops. Um, it allows uh, to make two main, two main uses. Either it can be a board, like a whiteboard, where everyone collaborates on the same board. Or otherwise, and this is the way we used it, by start teaching, clicking on start teaching, you get a whiteboard. Uh, you have the teachers by whiteboard, but each individual student will have a, a, a will have their own whiteboard. So uh, in this manner, you're increasing in interactivity, engagement from the students end, and the teacher can visit each and every board and see what each student is doing. So, and this keeps the students engaged and on task. Um, as you can see, this is the main layout. Uh, the the name of the board will be unnamed. So what the first thing we suggest is that you sign in um, uh, using, uh, once you sign in, you can use Google as well, or Microsoft accounts. Once you sign in, any boards, both your boards, as well as those of the students, will all be saved uh, automatically. So this is very important to sign in. The easiest way how to use this uh, whiteboard is to upload, maybe if you have a PDF, if you have a JPEG, and you can upload it either from your computer or from Google Drive. You can also use it to uh, use the tool to uh, create directly on it and save the, the, the boards. Um, then there are a number of tools that can be used. Amongst these, uh, as you can see, they're listed there. I um, we have uh, suggested the, the show dice is very, I, it's a very useful tool. There's also rich text where the students, it's like a, it's like Word, so it's easy to use. There's YouTube, where YouTube is very, um, it's embedded, so the students will not have any advertisements. There's the compass, the maths. Uh, interestingly enough, there's also uh, two st student signals, which is the either the thumbs up or thumbs down, or the traffic light symbol, which can be used for social and emotional learning. Uh, there is also the tile factory with, with, with a click and drag activity. So the, um, the tools are infinite and they're being updated each and every week. There are also grids. So as a background, you can have different grids. Uh, it, it can be used both in the lower and upper years, even secondary as there are programming as well. There are, there are the various grids as we can see here, the handwriting. So it depends on uh, it is very, it's a very versatile tool that can be used across all subjects and across all levels. Um, when you go to manage boards there, you can access your boards. So um, you have uh, the, the boards are automatically saved. There is also the date when the board, board will expire and as well as you can delete the board. But for, for each board, as you can see, there's the plus sign. 
there is the board of each and every student and by clicking on the eye you can visit even later on to see the work um, carried out by the students. Uh, furthermore, you can also download uh, each and every board. Uh, you can download it as a PDF to, to be able to visit it later on for formative assessment. Uh, an additional tool is the palette. The palette, um, there are various options. They are adding uh, images there constantly, including those for maths, rewards. But also, interestingly enough, there are the widgets. The widgets, there are two widgets. There is a widget with all those students who would be logged in, who would be part of the chat. There can be a name spinner. So once you click on the name, you can use it to ask questions or it's a very versatile how it can be used. We have also used it uh, for students to carry out exercises uh, to keep them fit even during, uh, during a change in lessons and uh, with different ex exercises that the students can do. Um, this, the settings for the board, uh, depending on the level of students you've got, you can have either very simple tools. So you can select that the students will only have the draw and the text, while you can also select to leave all tools available, including a graphical calculator. So uh, that extends uh, uh, and allows the, st the students to personalize the boards depending on the audience and the students they have in front of them. You can also share uh, a co co-invite co with a co-teacher to ensure that uh, you, you both have the same rights. Um, uh, you can also uh, lock the class or let us say you're explaining. You don't want the students to write during your explanation. You just want them to follow. There is also the follow teacher where you can able and disable it depending on whether you want the students to uh, follow on the page you are or, or, or not. So, or you want them, if you disable it, they will move from one page to the next um, of your board. Very easy to invite. It's uh, also useful that you don't need your students to sign in. All they need is to, you can either share with them through a QR code, through a link, through just the code, or also through Teams or Google Classroom. They just write in their name and they they uh, where they have please enter your name they write in their name and they log in and um as you can see uh, there we have the follow teachers page that will be signaling to the students that uh, they will they cannot move from one page to the other and they have to follow the teachers page and also um if they go to grid view if you as a teacher go to grid view you can have access and see what each and every student is doing um, you may say these are very small, but by clicking on one of them, uh, you would be able to join on the board and um, you will be able to write down um, uh, feedback or also give uh, stickers and, and uh, as well. So, so, um, so you're giving also personalized feedback to each and every student. Um, we are not the whiteboard or chat offers many, many more features, which we don't have time to go into today, but it's a very versatile and useful tool, which they are um, updating every week. Uh, my colleague, you. Miss Natalie, I uh, hand over to you. OK, so um, just a brief um, overview about the project, how we went through. Our first coding project was Mark the Path. And basically what we did, we selected this template and we've inputted in a different number of pages. And we asked the children several questions and related to the story um, of Ada Lovelace. For example, who was Mrs. Path? And the students had to mark the path from the start um, towards uh, the correct picture uh, to the corresponding to the question. And this was interesting because it promoted computational thinking skills because um, each and every student obviously selected different paths. This was one example. This was another example. The paths were then also discussed with the students for example, which was the fastest route or which was um, the longest route. Um, the second activity was use the code. And um, basically, children over here were given a code for every um, letter, and then they had to like crack the code over here to come up with um, what the answer is. So they had to um, usually code. Uh, this is another example. 
And this is an example from a student. As you can see, you will have uh, the student board and the name of the, the board. And there will also be the student's name. As I've mentioned before, um, we disabled this um, for the sake of this presentation. The third activity was follow codes and color. And basically, this was related to coding, where we've also explained that where there is a zero, there's a no, non-signal, and where there is a one, there's a signal. So basically, the children had to use the features from whiteboard .at, um, from the from the tools and um, color in wherever there is a signal. Um, this was one example, so that um, eventually they had to see what the response was. And this was another example from the students. The fourth and last activity was crack the code. Um, again, they were given um, a different icon um, for for the letters, but this time the messages, um, uh, the the code was actually a positive message um, for them to crack. This is another example. Um, for example, this one was reach higher, um, and obviously each and every um, child could um, carry out the activity um, on their own whiteboard, and then these were then saved and we could um, discuss them together as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for uh, your inspiring presentation as well. Uh, so, uh, yes, we have uh, two questions so far uh, and uh, it is uh, just a moment. Um, yes, Fatima is interested in uh, is this tool whiteboard uh, free for both teachers and students yes yes it is a free tool mm -hmm. and okay. it is constantly being updated um following the, the educators suggestions so um there's a very very helpful group they have a very helpful facebook group as well and um, we have recently messaged them to import and um, some animal characters because they weren't included to be used in science and within two days they were there available to use so oh my god very good. Wow. yes we really promoted it really really user driven <laughs> organization so great uh and um I'm not sure if I understand this question correctly, but Vesna uh, has a question. Can I use their website for activities? Uh, it is a free tool. So you actually um, access the web website, you just type whiteboard.chat and then you automatically get the board. And then you just cl click on invite for the students to join. So, so you yes. don't need to export uh, anywhere or integrate somewhere. You just, yeah. No. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, okay, and yes, I don't see anything else here. Just bravo and uh, congratulations. You. you can see those in the comments. All right. So we have our last presentation now. Uh, I welcome here uh, Claudia Koshenina and uh, your presentation will be about art. Yes. yes so that's true. Um, okay. I just share it. Okay. Okay. Is it on? Yes. Hope. Um, I would like to share with you uh, two of my art projects that proved to be great for distance learning. Quite a lot has changed during the past year. Um, I had some difficulties at the beginning with remote work because I teach a third, fourth and fifth class in combination. That means all three um, at the same time. It was hard, tiring, but when it comes to art, my heart is overwhelmed by happiness. And distance learning can be challenging, yes, but it definitely encourages new creative ways to think uh, and teach. Um, so. My biggest challenge was to educate with all sorts of approaches that motivate students for learning, to find or create art challenges that are also new for me and bring all sorts of curiosity to my students. Some school subjects were harder to teach than others on distance. Um, and art lessons may seem like fun and games, 
but they are really so much more. Through art, students gain useful life skills. They can express themselves on a fundamental level. Creating art allows them to work through feelings and emotions. Art also develops creativity. And art is all around us. And we only see it if we are open-minded. And that is my biggest desire to hand over to my students like some kind of passion to observe things that are uh, around us, to get inspiration in life. It is important to impress students with uh, creative art tasks, to give them reasons for exploring, and to create situations they, they make them seek their own ideas and solutions, whether it's learning math, science or art. As teachers, we need to know, especially younger students, uh, we need to show them all the diverse learning areas and possibilities, show them ways that they can explore and seek for what they enjoy or are good at it. I'm sure that we are all trying to do that. But I always search for inspiration in things that I really enjoy and um, am passionate about. It's all about excitement and wide open view for everything that happens around us. So I wanted to try something new. Uh, during lockdown, I invited my students um, to a virtual museum that I created just for our learning experience. Here are just some slides of my presentation. At the beginning, they received a ticket with our school logo, price tag, title. I also added the scanning sound to presentation and I was their guide through eight different museum rooms. Everybody got a map of the museum. In every room, there was an art assignment which opened debate about a historical period. Because I teach all three classes at the same time, I had to adjust the learning material um, that is suitable for all three of them. Uh, so we have done eight artworks, uh, like sculpturing a Roman statue from newspaper, exploring Greek culture on pots and drawing and so on. We were learning about history, about art, geography, music, and also math at the um, end of presentation in the museum shop. Students loved our walk through the museum and also art introduces them to cultures from all around the world. Uh, but after three long months on remote teaching and with still no option to go to back to school, we were all a bit tired and at that moment motivation was key. Art brings me joy and opportunities to be more creative than usually. And this time I wanted to interactively be, bring them closer to portraits of famous artists. Their assignment was five to famous art portraits from Leonardo da Vinci, Frida Kahlo, Caravaggio, Ivana Kubica. At first, I just made a selection of portraits from my art books um, and carefully choose portraits individually for everyone. I teach and know them all from first grade because in our small school, there are only 24 students from first uh, to fifth grade and our relations are close. I exactly knew what to assign to whom. At first, they just needed to look at details of their assigned portrait, colors, shapes, compositions, special object. I was just hoping to create results but they really surprised me. Whole families gathered and helped with this work. They looked for the right clothes to wear, searched for objects that are similar to the ones in the painting, doing their hair and makeup. At the same time, uh, students developed an attitude towards art and added um, a part of themselves uh, to their works. They observed artwork in a way they probably wouldn't in museums or books. It was inspiring to talk to them about the project. It was so great to hear how they approached and achieved such amazing results. Even our national television and newspaper made articles about our project. 
we just mainly wanted to get to know the artworks and have as much fun as possible. I know, for example, that this boy is comfortable to become or dress as an old woman because he's fun, he likes to tell jokes. Uh, so I learned that the process of the student works uh, work is just um, as important as the final product. This girl said to me that she added seeds on bread to get even closer to painting and that she changed three places to get the right uh, window, the light. So um, the situation we found ourselves in might seem like an obstacle to doing our work, but it also uh, we uh, but we should also see it as an opportunity to explore new ways of teaching that were not possible before. Uh, when we use ways of learning that are closer to our students when they can learn interactively with the main goal to have fun and explore is key to great teaching. Uh, thank you very much for everything, for short um, lessons and things. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Claudia. Uh, also thank you. For me, me, it was uh, really inspiring uh, because I believe that you as a teacher, whatever you teach, you can always uh, use some art into your teaching. Even if you yes. teach uh, languages or science or, I don't know, sociology. Math, everything, or, yeah. Yes, yes. That's, uh, that's true. Uh, really, it's really inspiring to see this project. Uh, and mm -hmm. I was one of them who saw this project on our national news. That's why then I invited Claudia to our <laughs> pan-European conferences because I saw, oh, wow, we must share this with the whole, uh, whole community of teachers. Yeah. Uh, th so uh, thank you. Um, and um, also thank you that you reminded us that actually the process of learning is important, not just the end of the results. And I believe that the whole project of yours uh, just reflects this uh, devotion to the process. Uh, and uh, since uh, you reminded us about the process of learning, I would like to invite you all to our next Pan-European conference, which will be in April, 22nd of April. It will be devoted to growth mindset. So growth mindset will be the focus topic. Uh, it's a really wonderful topic about uh, the, the nature of brains and intelligence and how we can focus as teachers on the process of learning, not just the end results and so how we can um, communicate in a way that we support growth mindset of our students and not fixed mindset. So kindly invited, please do, um, do um, uh, apply as listeners or as presenters if you have some kind of a material or some kind of practice or project that reflects uh, the your focus on learning process, not just on the end result. So how do you actually support growth mindset of your students? Kindly invited. And yes, uh, this is the end of uh, our conference. Thank you very much. I hope you find a lot of useful thoughts and ideas also for your practice. I like our conference just because it's just you know, no fancy words. It's just learning from practice to practice, from teacher to teacher. And uh, thank you for all your contributions. Uh, I hope to uh, stay in touch. And uh, we will, of course, yes, you are asking us about the recordings of the conference. So the conference stays on the channel and you can access the recording whenever you wish. So either on Facebook, either on YouTube, uh, it is available. Uh, and um, all the materials, so the presentations are available on the 
uh, on the um, Pan-European Conference on Digital Education Facebook group. Yeah, so if you are not member yet, please do become and then you can download everything. Uh, in the end, I just say goodbye to all of you and um, have a good, uh, good day. Thank you very much. Thank you.